Hey folks, Darren with Fervent Astronomy. Today we're going to be looking at a bit of a choice that you might find yourself having if you were in the Canon mirrorless system. And I know being someone in the Canon mirrorless system, choices might be a rare thing. So today we have 200 millimeter f2.8 macro lenses to compare. Both made by Canon, one's newer and one's older. Hey, how about that? So all facetiousness aside, we've got the EF 100mm f2.8 macro L ISUSM and the RF 100mm f2.8 L macro ISUSM OMG uh, with SA control. And uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, the names of lenses kind of get out of hand. Uh, all things considered, it's the same focal length, same aperture range. One's newer and mirrorless specific, one's a bit older. Which one is the right one for you? Can you save some money and go with the 100 mil from uh, the EF mount, or are you going to need to splurge on the RF version? Let's take a look at some samples. Uh, I have done individual reviews on both of these lenses, but uh, uh, let's compare them directly and see what we can make of it. Hey folks, welcome to Lightroom. Today we're going to do a head to head for the EF and RF 100 millimeter macro lenses for Canon. And if you are a Canon DSLR user, well, one of these lenses is gonna be right for you. And if you're a Canon mirrorless user, hopefully this will help you figure out which of these lenses might be right for you. So we have eight samples here, and I want to make note that these samples will be available for download, full RAWs, check the link in the description. Uh, it'll bring you back to Fervent Astronomy's website where you'll be able to download them and pixel peep to your heart's content. They are, however, my copyrighted work, and it was a bit of work to actually get these samples and make them, so please respect that. Please use them in good faith. Don't reproduce them online or otherwise. Don't misrepresent them as your own. Don't use them for your own reviews, etc., etc. Please just use them for their intended purpose, which is to help you decide if one of these lenses is the lens for you. So all eight of these photos were taken with the Canon EOS R5, currently their highest megapixel mirrorless camera at uh, around 45 megapixels. They are, of course, both 100 millimeter macro lenses with f2.8 apertures. All of the exposures here were taken at 60 seconds. They were all tracked with the Fornax Mounts Light Track 2 portable tracker. Fervent Astronomy is Fornax Mounts exclusive North American distributor. So if you're interested in their mounts, you can head over to ferventastronomy.com to learn more but these are 60 second exposures. That gives us some latitude. And you'll notice that I've shot all these samples in ISO 400. Uh, the Canon R5 has two native ISOs, or rather uh, you can think of it as two analog amplification stages, one at ISO 100, one at ISO 400. Every other ISO value in that camera is digitally amplified. And digital amplification is just the camera essentially doing the same thing that we do when we adjust the exposure in Lightroom. Whether it's 400 ISO or 4000 ISO, I'm going to get the same noise, the same everything, uh, essentially, as long as the exposure time and the aperture are the same. Uh, what I will get a little bit of, though, if I shoot at this lower ISO as opposed to 4000, is some preserved highlights. Now, this isn't really that important for astrophotography, at least not for just taking pictures of stars, but let's say you're taking pictures of bright nebula, like the Orion Nebula. Uh, this can be a way to keep that center of that nebula from blowing out or blowing out as much as it would have and, and clipping on the right side of the histogram. What this means is you can retain some of that information and also enjoy the same noise you otherwise would if you cranked the expo uh, ISO up uh, in camera so that your exposure looked good on the back of the camera. Here I boosted all of uh, these files a little bit already just to make them visible. 60 second exposure at f2.8, it's a fairly decent amount of information. So that's why we do things like this. There's no benefit uh, to this camera to shooting above ISO 400 if you're concerned with things like noise. For instance, the only thing that can really make a difference in the end is your exposure value or your f-stop. So that's the spiel. Look up ISO invariance if you want to kind of learn more about that. Now we've got uh, up here the RF mount lens, I believe. Yep, and down here we've got the EF mount lens. Just to make this a little bit easier, because we're going to compare apples to apples. So RF and EF. So let's take a look at the 2.8 exposures. Here we've got the RF mount 100 mil on the left and the EF mount 100 millimeter lens on the right. Right from jump, they have actually pretty similar levels of vignetting from what I can see. 
the EF lens has a little less could be considered, but there's a little bit of a different color reproduction here. Maybe that might be masking that. We'll take a look at that more once we dive in and do some lens corrections, but let's pop into the center here. And you can see, just give a frame of reference, because this is the, the same star field, just a tiny bit shifted uh, over the night. But let's take a little peek here. You know, we're fairly close to the center of the frame here. And one thing I do want to make note, uh, so we've got these little stars here, this little triplet. Here's them again. It's two galaxies, two galaxies. I want you to pay attention to these stars right here, kind of adjacent to the galaxies on each side. And you'll notice here with the EF mount lens, they're pretty compact. But here on the RF mount lens, you've got one side that's fairly opaque, and then the other side here that is starting to get a little bit transparent almost, a little bit fuzzy. That means that the RF mount lens here has coma. I took pains to make sure that I had the SA control set at the neutral position. So I'm not discounting that this could possibly be something to do with the SA control. Perhaps on this copy of the lens, neutral on the adjustment ring isn't actually neutral. Uh, maybe there is a spot that was a little bit better. Uh, or maybe, maybe the lens just has coma and it has coma kind of fairly close to the center of the frame, which is disappointing. If you look up here, we can see it's fairly consistent and it is pointing more towards the frame center. So this is going to be internal coma. If we look up here a little bit, yeah, we've got some, and you can see diagonally it's going down towards the frame center. So that's a little bit of a bummer, to be honest. And if we look at the EF lens, of course, that's not happening. Go out a little bit more. It's not really something that we can note happening here on this lens. Here you can see it happening fairly prominently. Same star is not so much. Mind you, on the EF lens, there is a little bit more chromatic aberration. So you do have a bit of that fringing and there's a, a bicolor split. It's like red on one side, maybe a bit bluer on the other side. There's a hint of it on the RF lens, but no coma really to speak of on the EF mount lens. We also don't seem to have any real spherical aberrations, which isn't surprising. Spherical aberrations are usually found in lenses that uh, only have spherical elements, but most of these lenses I'm assuming have some aspherical elements, which sort of prevent the stars from getting kind of big, bloated, fuzzy fuzziness around them. So that's good. And like a little bit of chromatic aberration, maybe a little bit of fringing in the EF version of the lens as opposed to the RF version. This star here looks not too far from center. Let's take a look. Here we see a little bit of fuzziness, a little bit of loss of contrast. Same thing, a little fuzziness, a little loss of contrast, although we're getting extra something happening here. Possibly a result of astigmatism, sagittal astigmatism, possibly some diffraction happening. Uh, this particular star does look almost like it has very minute tines to it, whereas it's a little smoother here. But one thing we can take a look at these stars right here. Here you can see very clearly on the RF version that you know one side of these stars is turning into some odd fuzzy arc almost pointed towards the center of the frame. That's bad news. That is coma. Here we don't really have that on the EF version. If we go, let's go to this bottom left hand corner. And here we see uh, some signs of astigmatism. What I just showed you was coma. It's coma because there's a fuzzy comet tail. And that's how it's gotten its name because it resembles a comet with a fuzzy tail, comatic aberration, coma, comets. That is coma. This, this elongation and little wings and stuff you see on some of the stars and misshapenness, this is astigmatism. So astigmatism is when the lens is having trouble focusing the pinpoint of light that is a star in one point. And so tangential astigmatism will seem to radiate uh, along radii that come from the center to the edge of the frame. So the tangential follows those lines. Sagittal astigmatism is a bit different. It will actually ring. So it's at a right angle to the tangential astigmatism. So the tangential astigmatism, you can think of it, it'll point towards the center from the edges or vice versa, whereas sagittal will kind of run around. It tries to avoid the center of the frame. And that can lead to different types of shapes. Sometimes they look like little fighter jets. Sometimes they look like little birds. Here it looks like these stars have little wings. That is the sagittal astigmatism. And the longer part here, that is the tangential. Here, they're a little more triangular. So the astigmatism is kind of turning the star more into a distorted shape. Here it's 
it's doing a full cross in the T and giving little wings to things. Let's go look in the top left hand corner. Here we see something that was sort of reminiscent of the last corner, a little more triangular uh, that with the EF lens. The RF lens though, things are getting a little bit wonky. Things like uh, one side flared out there and um, that's kind of unusual. There's definitely an asymmetry there. I'll look at this. So it looks like what's happening here is we've got that tangential astigmatism, but the sagittal uh, is somehow stronger on this side than this side on all the, the pinpoints there. So that is a little bit odd you know, these stars. And of course, you've got different colors of chromatic aberration. They're sort of failing to focus all the colors in the, in the right spot, but they're failing to focus slightly different colors. But this is a little bit more of an irregular shape. These little triangles, you know, while still astigmatic, I guess they're not much bigger than these here. Some of the smaller stars here, because of this, these actually retain more of a rounder appearance in this corner, whereas these are pretty triangular. So you're kind of splitting the difference there. What you really, in my opinion, want when you're dealing with a lens like this, like most lenses are going to have astigmatism. What you're looking for is a fairly consistent size, visual size of the smattering of stars between the center and edges of your frame. If you've got a lot of astigmatism, it can make the stars look bigger than they are. So when you're viewing it at a, a normal sane person's viewing angle and viewing distance, you can't quite see the shapes, but you can see that they're bigger around here for some reason, and that they get a lot sharper and tighter the closer they get to the center of the frame. That gives a weird distortion sensation, especially if you're doing a time lapse, where if stars were entering from one side of the frame, they'd enter large, get small, and then get bigger as they left the frame there. That can lead to a weird sort of looking through a bottle type of effect with the RF and the EF mount lenses. It's not too bad between the two of them, but I, I do feel like the EF seems to be a little bit more consistent, although the, uh, the difference in vignetting might be affecting my perception there. Yeah, these weirdly asymmetrical astigmatism, that's odd. Let's go to the bottom right hand corner. Not too much bright. Oh, here we go. We've got one. So here we've still got this kind of vaguely triangular shape on the EF mount lens and this weird distorted uneven shape on the RF mount lens. That seems pretty consistent, although the strong side and the diminished side here, are not quite sure what the relationship is and where they where they decide to change sides if they do here. Right side's the strong side. The scroll, it kind of stays, kind of stays that way the whole way through there. Does it switch up? I think it switches up somewhere around here. Yeah, those, these look a little bit more even. Center of the frame as you might expect. Now I think the opposite side's getting a little bit bigger. Yeah, so you'll have to take a look at these yourself and and uh, make an assessment there. Overall, I would say as far as the astigmatism goes, the EF mount lens is, is kind of pulling ahead. I mean, they're in the center of the frame. They're, they're both pretty good. Adding in that little bit of chromatic aberration that we can see happening with the RF mount lens, honestly, again, that's a, a plus for the EF mount lens. So you might need to uh, look at a EF to RF adapter if you don't already have one if you want to have the cleanest lens for your Canon mirrorless camera. So now we're going to take a little look at the various distortions and vignetting correction in Lightroom. I don't think either of these lenses really have any field curvature to speak of, so everything seems to be getting focused properly across the frame, but we'll see what happens with the distortion. So here we've got the EF mount lens on the right and the RF mount lens on the left. We can confirm that by looking for these astigmatisms. So I'm going to enable profile corrections and voila. You'll notice that vignetting here is pretty much gone. That's impressive, actually. Yeah, pretty much gone. And one thing that we'll notice is there's not a lot of geometric transformations happening. So when I when I flip this on and off, you do kind of see a shift in movement. There is some type of movement, but this lens does not seem to have a lot of distortions. If you look around the edges and watch for any stars disappearing uh, beyond the pale, basically, nothing's really happening there. So we're not uh, essentially cropping very much, we're not gaining any focal length. Maybe there's some very mild stretching here to correct some minor pin cushion distortion, but other than that, pretty flat. So I think as far as a low distortion, low field curvature, low chromatic aberration, coma free, you know, relatively average in the astigmatism department type of lens, you're looking pretty good with the EF mount lens. What we want to look at is, now yeah, that's corrected, kind of look in the corners and then follow it down towards the center. And do things look consistent? You know, obviously 
the stars are you know not in a regular pattern or anything as far as brightness goes but are the stars about the same size here as they are here as they are here if the answer is yes you're probably looking at some astigmatism that really doesn't cause much of a visual disturbance to an image when viewed at a regular person's viewing distance zoomed in at 400 percent, yeah we can see it zoomed out not so much so let's switch over and we'll apply corrections here to the rf mount lens so here we have the RF mount lens. Here we have our EF comparison. So we'll enable profile corrections. And you can see right away, cleans up some of that vignetting, but not entirely. You can still see there are dark corners as opposed to our EF mount friend here. Things are a little bit darker in the corners. We can do some little manual adjustments here and we can correct that or give it a little bit of assistance, a little too much. Might have to fiddle with this, give it a little, little help. Every lens is different, of course. So every lens will have a bit of a different response to the standard lens profiles. Uh, it's just the nature of manufacturing. They're not all completely to the fraction of a micron ma manufactured the same. So you might have to do a little tweaking with any given lens. It helps, but still doesn't get rid of that vignetting. We'll just get rid of that for now. One thing you will note compared to the EF mount lens is when we correct the RF mount lens, geometric transformations are a lot more apparent here than they were for the EF mount lens. There still seems to be some pin cushion distortion that's being corrected. But if you look along the long edge, you can see that stars actually get closer to the edge and leave the frame. That tells us that there's a lot of stretching this direction around the short edge here and in the corners. These are far enough away that they don't seem to be suffering the same amount of distortion. So we're losing a little bit along the short edge, but I think the corners are mostly staying put. You know, these stars aren't leaving the frame. So basically pincushion distortion that's being corrected by stretching the image out from the center a little bit to flatten uh, what is a curved field. You can imagine if we were taking a picture of a brick wall, we have all our straight lines, right? If we didn't have those corrections applied, those straight lines would appear curved. That's what's happening. We are trying to focus light uh, onto a flat surface using a bunch of curved glass elements or plastic or crystal or whatever they're made out of. So you know what? Pretty good is pretty good. In this regard, there's a bit more correcting happening, although I wouldn't suspect we're losing much in the resolution department because 45 megapixels is a lot. So it's going to be imperceptible, any loss of resolution from basically the center portion being stretched out. So I wouldn't worry about that. I do have to say on probably every metric, I'd probably give it to the EF mount lens, whether it's the lack of coma, fairly consistently present, but altogether not too wild astigmatism, the lack of field curvature, excellent for all things considered distortion levels, less vignetting, vignetting that's corrected better by profile corrections. I mean, for astrophotography, it's just a better, more consistent lens. It's not without its faults. Every lens has a fault, but it just has slightly less of them as compared to its newer sibling here. I'm going to leave it there. I, um, I hope you found this interesting and illuminating. Again, with the caveat, the RF mount lens has that silly SA correction feature. I had made sure that it was in the neutral position, but maybe neutral is not really neutral, or maybe just the inclusion of that feature unfortunately necessitates some extra levels of aberration. I think that's probably a reasonable assumption. If I was doing it for astrophotography or macro and astrophotography, and I did not need or want that SA feature, I would save my money and I would buy the EF version of this lens hands down even with the cost of the EF to RF adapter although you probably already have one I think this is a clear winner so I don't say that very often but it's plain to see plain as day so thanks so much well I'm I'm a little bit surprised to be honest uh I mean in every metric pretty much I'd take the EF version over the RF version it's really remarkable but you know, maybe that's good news for you because you can find EF lenses on the used market or, you know, from various stores clearing them out for a fair bit cheaper than you can find the uh, Canon here or the RF version, I guess. I mean, it's up to you. You do you, basically. I hope you found this useful if you were looking at this type of decision. And yeah, maybe we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much.